Ayan, alas dos na. Ano sa'yo? Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Kamusta po tayo mga ka-quarantine? <laughs> Ito po ang 2020 UP Korea Research Center for Korea, Korean Studies Info Session. At ngayon pong hapon, meron po tayong tagapagsalita live sa Pegu, South Korea, na magbibigay po ng kanyang experience as an international student, as a Philippine student sa Korea sa gitna ng COVID. At pagkatapos po nito, magkakaroon po tayo ng question and answer. And then after that, uh, dahil po marami doon sa mga katanungan, doon sa inyong finil out na form, ang may kinalaman directly sa GKS o Global Uh, Global Korea Scholarship, magbibigay din po ako ng uh, information tungkol dito. Ako nga po pala si Ronel Laranco. Nagtuturo po ako sa Universidad ng Pilipinas, Diliman. At naatasan po ako ng UP Korea Research Center na i-moderate ang session natin ngayong hapon. Um, I will just briefly introduce UP KRC or UP Korea Research Center. It was launched on April 27, 2016, aiming to provide Filipino scholars and researchers with opportunities to widen their interest in Korean studies. UPKRC holds various academic and cultural activities for Filipino scholars and professionals and serves as a university-wide hub that will help promote and develop Korean studies in the country. Okay, so for more information about KRC and updates about, about our events, you can visit www.facebook.com slash UPKRC, all caps po. Ulitin ko po, www.facebook.com slash UPKRC, all caps. Okay, so ngayon po, pakikinggan po natin ang uh, first uh, session natin for this year. Uh, tungkol sa Korean Studies Info Session. At uh, ang atin pong nagkapagsalita ay isang uh, currently a recipient of Global Korea Scholarship and she is currently a language student at Kemyong University in Tegu and will pursue her PhD in International Studies at Iwa Women's University. She has a master's degree in Asian studies and a bachelor's degree in political science. Uh, she is also a formal, former faculty member of the Ateneo de Manila University's Chinese Studies Program at the NPUP, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, College of Political Science and Public Administration. She lectured to some offices of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and worked as a consultant and defense analyst at the Office of Naval Strategic Studies of the Philippine Navy. Okay, so let's welcome Ms. Ivy Ganadillo. So, uh, magsasalita po siya and then kung meron po kayo mga tanong, pwede nyo pong i-type dyan. Tapos, asasagutin po natin yan pagkatapos ng uh, talk ni Ms. Ivy Ganadillo. Ano nga sa'yo, Ma'am Ivy? So hi, good afternoon, everyone. Right. Uh huh. So thank you for the introduction, Ronel. So like Ronel said, I'm in Daegu, South Korea right now. I'm as a language student. So anyway, um, during your registration, we have seen your questions. You were asked actually to give questions. So I'll try to incorporate on my discussion sa so actually, it's not, it's kwentuhan lang natin, sa kwentuhan natin yung mga tanong ninyo. I hope that I could somehow answer it. But like what Ron said uh, later on this part, because some many of the questions were actually on how to apply on GKS, on career scholarship and other stuff though. So, So later, ipapaluwanag niya uh, more in-depth on that. Anyway, uh, huh. um, so uh, I am requested to look into or to discuss or magkwento sa inyo tungkol sa 
the Global Career Scholarship uh, experience here studying in Korea, and of course, na quarantine tayong lahat ngayon. And as everyone knows, Daegu is the epicenter of the virus of COVID-19 virus here in Korea, and it was put into spotlight in the news actually after Wuhan, the next big outbreak of. The COVID-19 vi virus is in Daegu, sabi nga nila, is the second, um, second Wuhan is uh, Daegu uh, during that time. So luckily, anyway, we don't have shutdown here. There is no lockdown that happened. So anyway, discuss uh, kumuna is the Daegu life <laughs> and the COVID-19 pandemic here in Daegu. Then later... Uh, second part natin, saka ko i-discuss yung Global Korea Scholarship or my experience actually in applying um, scholarship here in Korea. All right? So like what Ron said, I'm here right now in Kamen University. It's in Daegu, South Korea. It's um, uh, South Province. It's near Busan. One hour from Busan, maybe four hours by bus from Seoul. And... I was actually assigned here, so hindi ko pinili yung language school. Uh, the Korean government will actually assign us to a, uh, to a university outside the city kung saan ka natanggap for your graduate program. So in my case, I was accepted in Iwa Women's University for my graduate program. So they need to assign me to a language school outside Seoul. So I was assigned here in uh, Kamyong University. So yeah, the, like what I said, um, we cannot choose where are we going to study our language school. And then your classmates for the language school are varied. Are, they come from different countries, of course, from different programs. Some are master's degree students, some are PhD students, and yeah, we're mixed up for the first year. Anyway, uh, later maybe I'll discuss more. But that's the reason why I'm here in Daegu and why I am here in Kemio. So like what I said, it's um, maybe four hours in Seoul. It's the fourth next big uh, city. First is uh, yeah, Seoul, you have uh, Busan, Incheon, and then you have uh, Daegu, if I'm not mistaken. So we have 2.5 million population here in Daegu. And this Gyeongsang province, as you can see on the map, the North Gyeongsang province was put into special management zone during the time of the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. So anyway, um, I want to tell to you first what is, okay, wait lang. Anong meron sa Daegu? What is the life here? Just introduce you what is the environment here before I discuss maybe uh, what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. Right now, it's okay na siya. Next week, we will have face-to-face -face class, so back to school. But before that, I want to show you very brief. I hope the video will play. Uh, to many of you, was fun of K-drama, of course, K-pop. Degu is always in all the K-dramas that you have watched. Maybe a pinaka uh, pinaka popular for K-dramas also here in our university. This is the place where Boys Over Flower shoot there many of the scenes in Daegu, also many of other, uh, yeah. Even the latest Eternal Monarch, many of the scenes are also here in Daegu. So, that's how beautiful Daegu is, actually, laid back than the soul. So I'll try to play this video. I hope medyo nagahang kasi siya kanina if you play it on Zoom, but if not, uh, anyway, okay, let's try. <clears throat> ah, okay, doesn't work. Anyway, so uh, what is good uh, here in Daegu is actually um uh, we have a lot of what is good in Daegu is the nature is good hiking mountain climbing you can do all that you have a lot of parks mm -hmm. uh big park shopping is very cheap actually compared to seoul uh, um, some of my korean friends said that even their other korean friends from other city go here in Daegu for shopping 
and yeah, everything is accessible, especially in our university here, Cayman University, just go out on the gates and then you can have a place where you can actually hang out, uh, shop, and downtown is very near 15 uh, minutes from subway station. All right. Also here in Daegu is there's a huge community of Filipinos. So I've met the Filipino migrant community here in Daegu in a Filipino church. Uh, it's of course it's run by Korean. Their priest is Korean, but aside from that, all those who assist on the church are all mostly Filipinos, Filipinos and Vietnamese, but mostly Filipinos. Um, uh, there are migrant workers. I think many factory workers are here in Daegu as well. So, maraming Filipino dito. So, in the in the Catholic Church, it feels at home. You can attend English Mass. It's very difficult actually to find English Mass, English Catholic Mass. But when we found out about that uh, uh, Tehan Church, Catholic Church, so it feels like home because you have all the Filipinos there. And in the, on that church also, there's an international students group. So it helps really on um, adopting here in Korea. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So like what I've said, yeah, so the experience here in Daegu first before COVID, everything is fine. Everything is good. Uh, it's a big city where you can enjoy uh, life. Right, so what happened uh, during COVID-19? All right, so uh, the first case of COVID in the Philippines, uh, in the Philippines, sorry, here in Korea or here in the, uh, here in Korea, I think it started in um, January. Uh, January, yes, January 1st or 2nd month, the first case of of um of COVID-19 was actually detected. Nakauwi pa ako sa Pilipinas by February. We have uh, like a few week, a uh, one week vacation in February. Nakauwi pa ako sa Pilipinas by February. And then I was actually scared to go back here in Korea because sa Pilipinas, wala namang case ng, ng COVID during the time. And here in Korea, it is it was actually starting already during the time February. So, as like everyone was scared of 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 the of the virus of course so like will i go back or not here in korea of course sabi nga is safe naman daw so we have no choice so yeah Daegu amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, just to show you the statistics, so this is what this was from yesterday. So around 10,810, the confirmed cases in here in Daegu. Uh, actually, yeah, around 9,000 released from quarantine. Also, those recoveries are around this number. Mm -hmm. And the disease are actually very low as well. So they handled it uh, very well and very carefully. So as you can see, on from the number of number of those got infected of the virus, so you can see Daegu has most of the number. I think it's sixty more than sixty percent of the cases here in Korea are here in Daegu. <laughs> so. Um, it caused alarm uh, to everyone of us. It caused alarm to everyone of us that um, there's a huge number of uh, people got infected of the virus. Okay. Uh, Ron, can you exit ng chair? Run. Hindi ko siya ma-exit. All right. Okay. All right. Uh huh.
Mm -hmm. So what are experiences as international students here in Korea during the time or at the height of the COVID pandemic? Uh, I think it's last week of February when they stop all the classes. Pero okay na rin because it's like one week before the end of the classes for the winter break when they ended the class. So wala masyado siyang nasagasaan kasi patapos na rin yung klase. So we we are asked to stay just in the dormitory of course because like all KGSP, all uh, uh, GKS scholars are just um, actually required to stay um, inside the dormitory. So we have no choice. So not so much people are going out. There's no lockdown. You can go out anytime. Actually, the transportations are good. Uh, but... Uh, People here in Korea really try their best not to go out. So, disciplinado sila na hindi sila lumalabas kahit they are actually free to go out. So, like for us, we only go out during the height of the pandemic if kailangan namin mamalengke. We need to go to the market to buy some stuff or um, toiletries and anything. But it's just walking distance. But if you ride actually bus or... Uh, subway, it's still operational, but it's rarely that you can see um, people really going out. At halos walang sumasakay ng bus, halos wala kang nakikitang people that hang out outside, go to restaurants, even they are actually open. So still, uh, there's still no much difference, no panic buying. You can, there's, you cannot feel that there's something except that it's too quiet and not so normal. Right, and then mm, hmm. uh, Daegu was we uh, for international students like us who are staying in the dorm. Medyo panic siya kasi ang inisip namin is um, if virus spread, mas mabilis sang mag spread on small places and like we are all in the dormitory people can go out and in in the dormitory koreans went back to their home only foreign students are left in the dormitory no one is monitoring us anymore and like before like there's still like for me when i went back here in korea after i have a one week vacation in the philippines in february every day they are monitoring my temperature but like around march like mga foreign students na lang yung naiwan sa dormitory. But the good thing is, uh, the university uh, provided us some foods, some toiletries as well, uh, and also for some other for, uh, foreign students or some students here in KMU, they I think they received 200,000 won. Uh, we did not receive because we are scholars already, but normal students, they receive 200,000 won aid from the Korean government, uh, from the Kenyan University, from the university, just for help during the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty that we face during COVID, especially for foreigners here in Korea, is for buying masks. Uh, they, at first, they were asked to have like need to have insurance which we don't have uh, we have we do have insurance but it's not like the one that they accept for you to buy a mask so there's a difficulty for foreigners to buy masks during the time uh, and the supply also runs out the good thing is like for me uh, and uh, for some other um, classmates here in korea our embassy different embassies our embassies really took care of us so the philippine embassy here in korea sent me a message like how's everything in daegu what do you need so they actually send masks kf94 masks here in daegu for us actually there are only two filipinos right now if i'm not mistaken here in kmyung university here in kmyung university so yeah philippine embassy helped us a lot during the COVID. gave us update i asked them do you think that there would be a lockdown in daegu they said they think it's impossible to have a lockdown election is coming and the korean government will really work hard to fight this virus and make um everything uh handled well 
So yeah, uh, and it happened. Mm, also, another thing is aside because supplies of mass are running out. Another good thing, like what I've mentioned earlier, there's a Catholic church here almost run by Filipinos. So they give us really supplies of sanitizers, masks, and this Filipino church did not only give us Filipinos, did not only provide for us Filipinos, but also for all my classmates, foreigners, regardless of your religion, they provided us supplies of mass sanitizers. So it actually helped a lot. Help a lot. Another thing is, if you're familiar with PICO, um, the Filipino scholars organization here in Korea, they also sent us some masks. So they asked, how many are you there in the in Kenyan University? They also provided us some masks. So uh, I can't remember how I was get in touch. I think the PICO has also directories of students here in Korea. Oh, we stand up on a Google form who are in Daegu who needs masks and sanitizers. So PICO, the Filipino Students Organization here in Korea also helped us. So in terms of support for Filipino communities here in, in Korea, it's actually, it's actually there. Hindi ka mawawala ng support from Filipino community, from Filipino Catholics, of course, uh, for Filipino students, fellow Filipino students here in Korea from PICO and the Philippine Embassy. Uh, will really help a lot. So, hindi siya, uh, it's not, an, it's really good. The support system is actually good as well. So, hindi ka din homesick. If you need Filipino foods in the big marts, there's a section for Asian food, you can buy Filipino foods. Yeah, of course, that's, uh, it's a little bit higher. It's more expensive, of course, sa presyo natin sa Pilipinas, but it's still okay. Uh, there are also a lot of Filipino restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, the, here in our university, the only, we don't have kitchen. We have kitchen, but it's only for the Muslims, of course, because they are actually uh, eating. They have food restrictions, but for non uh, for non Muslims, we can. Uh, cook in the kitchen, but we have our dormitory um, canteen where you can eat. You can sign up for it. It will be automatically deducted on your stipend every month, or you can actually eat outside. On my first semester here, I signed up for the dormitory food. Second sem, I just eat outside. It's, it's actually not, not expensive. And like what I've said, you can buy Filipino foods and go to Korean restaurants if you are actually really craving, right? So guys, anyway, before I go on, if you have any questions, just send a message. So later, uh, I will try to, um, I will try to answer your questions or I'll try to incorporate all your um, questions. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, moreover, on COVID um, experience also here in Korea. So it's very easy because there's only a hotline that we need to call. There's an um, incident that I think one of my fellow scholars got fever and sore throat. So, I mean, it's winter, so it can be just winter flu. So we, we just called a hotline and they said, you need to observe yourself for three days if it's still persists, you need to go to this specific hospital. So a friend also got like an asthma. So like respiratory symptoms are actually signs of also or symptoms of COVID. So if it's a respiratory problem, you just call a hotline and then they'll tell us that go to this um, hospital. It's a there are special hospitals just for COVID testing. And so not all hospitals, I guess, are doing COVID testing, the only specific hospitals, and they have makeshift on centers on front of the hospital para hindi magkahawahan. So it was actually fast. So check the symptoms if that you have a history also of contact with someone with has COVID, um, you will do the testing. Pero pag wala naman, you will do the ordinary uh, process of buying medicines and that's it. Mm -hmm. 
So, mm -hmm. that's it for yeah. What happened here during COVID? So, like, where the normal days during COVID is morning we go outside our dormitory exercise play badminton basketball jogging our university cup is so big and beautiful so we can all those do the stuff and after two weeks i guess we have supplemental uh, classes so we have videos that we could watch for us to study and then during weekends usually we do hiking go to the mountains so it's better to go to the mountains because there's so much risk of being infected by COVID. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. And then it's springtime here next week. Next week, we are, uh, the university announced that we will go back to class, face-to-face -face class next week so social distancing was actually eased right now also here in korea a lot of people are going out a lot of people are going to the restaurants hanging out mm, i hope that it's more it will go back to normal so face-to-face -face class will start also next week but social distancing will still or like everyday life quarantine yung term nila, it will be still observed so what will happen is, yeah, we will see because I think um, the danger of the pandemic is still there. Uh, this morning, uh, there are some infections again that has been detected in Seoul. But the good thing is the Korean government is actually uh, taking care of it. Contact tracing, um, testing is free and Regardless of your nationality, you will be cured of COVID for free as well. Uh, huh. If you need to be quarantined after you arrive here, they will provide you food and everything. So that's the good thing. I hope the Philippine government could actually do things like this. Right? Ayan. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, that's it for my experience during COVID. So like what I said, next week, we will go back to class and start again our face-to-face -face classes. So I will discuss now more about studying in Korea. I think this is uh, what everyone really wants to know as well. Right. Uh, anyway, the COVID thing is also all over the news. You can see it there. Mm -hmm. uh, GKS, we call it GKS now. Before it's KGSP, Korean Government Scholarship Program. Now it's Global Korea Scholarship. So anyway, guys, if you want to know more information. Anyway, Ron, uh, Assistant Professor Ron, will discuss more details about this later. But also, if you want to browse... I saw all your questions or details of your questions. Uh, you could check the website Study in Korea. It's run by the Korean government. All the details. Anyway, it's in English. Uh, you also have in Hangugo, of course. So most of the details of the scholarship are there. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron, pa exit uli ng sharing. Okay, so I'll discuss as many of your questions is, yeah, okay. Motivation studying here in Korea, my process of application, the language course, and of course, my graduate program, which is I will be taking my PhD. All right, my story is actually a little bit different from many of my classmates, many of my cause scholars here in Korea. And I think uh, those of you who know me in the Philippines, I've seen some questions from my former students. Why I'm in Korea? Why did I choose Korea to study? Because my background is my master's degree is in Asian studies. My track is on China studies. 
And like I said, I'm teaching in Ateneo for politics and governance in China, um, security, foreign policy of China. And like everyone was actually surprised why I was now here in Korea. So it's actually unexpected, unplanned even for me. All right. So your advice when we, uh, this is, last year 2019 of course it's my first time to apply for scholarship abroad and of course i finished my master's asian studies then work and then they said that you really need to be ready before you decide to go for a phd so it's a different kind of rigor. You need to be ready mentally, maybe as well, and emotionally that you need to do the thesis writing thing again. And my option is actually go as well abroad because I think I need a new environment and I need to be exposed on a different kind of learning environment and different kind of experience in order for me to grow in my academic field as well or in my career. So going out means also developing or growing your network. Uh, of course, getting more information, knowledge and getting uh, different kind of experience holistically, not only academically, right? Of course, cultural experience and everything. All right, so like what I said, my experience this is unexpected. It's, it's not planned. So they said when you apply to scholarship, you should not apply only in one scholarship. Of course, you can be accepted, you can be rejected. A lot of people are getting rejected. I have friends here or colleagues that they said they applied in Korea government scholarship uh, like many times this is their third time to apply here and then they got accepted so me this is my first time and luckily i got accepted but did i get rejection i get rejection from other scholarships in other country okay i only uh, applied for three countries uh, medyo busy din kasi sa pilipinas so it really takes time to look for scholarship and to check all the applications to do everything while doing your thing and doing your thing like working at the same time so i applied for chinese government scholarship i think that is expected because i'm in china studies i apply of course for korea government scholarship and the other one is for new zealand yeah, mca uh -huh. of course different process of application Pare-pareho lang din naman yung pinapasa ko. That's the good thing because you will be submitting only same, like for study plan and for your thesis, pare-pareho lang naman yun. Maybe it depends on the other requirements. For New Zealand, everything's online. And for Korea, I need to send the documents here. For China, everything's online as well, but it would be the same set of documents, usually same set of documents that you will be used in applying to different kinds of scholarship. All right, I got accepted in China, Chinese government scholarship. So there are three schools. It's like if you already know how's the process of Korean government scholarship, it's like embassy track of applying applying for scholarship in china so you need to nominate three universities and then at the end i don't know they will just assign you to a university something like that for new zealand the thing is um i need to apply it's general application for new zealand but you can start getting and contacting your universities uh, different universities three universities so if you got Accepted on the first phase. May tatlong universities ka na. So in China, Chinese government scholarship, I got accepted. In New Zealand uh, scholarship, uh, New Zealand universities. New Zealand universities, I got supervisors in three universities in New Zealand. And luckily, I didn't get, I didn't pass the first step in NCA to move on to the process of scholarships. So X na yung New Zealand. 
I cannot go there without scholarship. Even I was accepted by my university. It's a big no. Number one consideration, of course, is money, especially if you're going out. Of course, you'll make sure that you can provide for your finances and it should not be enough. It should be at least more than enough, right? So X in New Zealand, uh, even I have universities because I don't have scholarship. Um, Chinese government scholarship, guess what, guys? Okay, I'm here in Daegu right now. And guess what? When the Chinese government scholarship uh, was released, the result, they assigned me in Wuhan, China. <laughs> so, like, okay, I was assigned in Wuhan, China, in one of the universities in Wuhan, China for PhD in international studies. So... I was talking to my advisor before in, in UP, late professor, uh, former Baviera, and like, sabi namin dati, if it's not the other universities like in Beijing or in maybe in Shanghai or this universities, uh, I think you should go uh, to other universities. And Ivy, where did you apply in Korea? I applied in Iwa Women's University. So I chose to go here in Korea. Also, there are other considerations. I think uh, I've, I've read one of my students is actually asking, yeah, also surprised why I'm here in Korea because I'm in China studies track. So, uh, Aside from that, I was actually assigned in Wuhan, China by the Chinese government scholarship. It's like no way to choose that time. Uh, for my PhD studies, I need my background is political science, international studies, and security relations. So I this is also asked during my interview here in Korea. Why did I choose? Korea, given my background is on China studies. I also want to widen the scope of my academic field. China, I want to widen it on more regional areas. So Northeast Asia, which is China, Japan, Korea, or uh, that East Asia, this Northeast Asia. And my PhD topic is actually on naval diplomacy. So I need to be very critical on the security field. And I felt that if I will be writing very critical and very important topic about national security or international security, I need to do it in a university or in a country that could actually help me to be very critical on this kind of topic. All right. So that's the reason why I chose to be in Iwa Women's University and to apply in Iwa Women's University, given that their PhD in international studies is actually really good as well and have good reputation on this field of study. All right, so that's, that's to make the story short, what brought me here in Korea. All right, so on the process of application, it's actually, again, very different. Again, uh, okay. <laughs> Wala kasi akong alam actually, to be honest, about GKS. It's 2000. I don't have, I know that they have scholarship, but I don't know about the process of Global Korea scholarship. I never research about GKS as well or anything. I just seen the ad. Uh, I've been to Iwa University before. I think mm, 2015, I attended a public diplomacy workshop. So I'm aware that there's Iwa University, Iwa Women's University. So I followed them on Facebook before their page. And then I've seen an advertisement of Iwa Women's University that they are starting acceptance for uh, the spring semester, which is March. So I applied. I've seen on the website that they have scholarship as well. So I directly applied maybe January to Iwa Women's University for admission for a PhD in international studies. It's direct, direct application, guys. So I was interviewed. 
uh, I, I fill out forms. I sent through courier from the Philippines to Iwa my all requirements, transfer of records, uh, recommendation letters, application forms. It was sent through courier to Iwa Women's University. And then I was interviewed. Uh, I have a panel interview. I think since it's a PhD program that I have applied, um, all the questions are actually about my PhD proposal. So again, my topic that I proposed during the time is about a naval diplomacy. So how countries could cooperate in terms of maritime security. So my interview, which I think it runs around 10 minutes with three professors from Iwa Women's University. It's Skype interview. Everything is about my PhD proposal. So, well, malaramdaman nyo naman yun, what happened after the interview. And I felt that they are actually very interested on my topic. Right? So, that's it. After that, I got, I, maybe it's after two weeks. Because it's February. Yeah, by February, because March is the start of the spring semester. By February, I received already an admission to Iwa Women's University to start on in March, all right? So when I got my admission, it says this are the things that you need to do. You need to be in Iwa by this time and you need to pay this amount of tuition fee. Wow, okay. <laughs> It's so expensive. I don't have enough. I applied because I thought there was a scholarship. So I emailed the coordinator in Iwa Women's University International Studies Department if I could apply for a scholarship because I cannot produce that amount of money. I cannot go to Seoul without scholarship. And they said, ah, like I think for newcomers, he cannot have a scholarship. One of the professors said uh, he can find me a, a organization that could provide for my accommodation uh, for my dormitory, could pay for, for my dormitory for one semester. And then maybe after a SEM, I could apply for university scholarship. Try. So it's not an assurance. And it's so difficult to take a risk and I don't have money to pay for the first time of my tuition fee as well. So the coordinator said, oh, maybe you could try to apply for Global Korea Scholarship. They are still open. But the thing is, you need to have a one-year language program. And it's not in Iwa. So, of course, I said, during the time, I read, like, uh, I think I don't want to apply with this anymore or anything, but... Still, I think because my papers are already there and it's this additional application form that I need to fill out, I need to ask for another set of recommendation again. Medyo ganun kasi yung hassle natin sa pag-apply ng scholarship. You need to ask for recommendation letters and medyo... Hmm, um, we need to contact our former professors na sobrang bibisi din. But yeah, <laughs> we just need to do it. So I, I prepared again another set of application for my for KGS for a Global Korea scholarship, and I sent it again through courier in Iwa University, Iwa Women's University. So again, guys, there's two track in applying for um, Global Korea scholarship: university track and embassy track. So because of what happened to me. I chose already the university track because at first I got already admission to EY Women's University and I just need to apply for Global Korea Scholarship. So um, there's no second thought on where to apply and there's no second thought if, if I will apply through embassy or through university. So I just sent it to EY, Univer EY, EY Women's University, my GKS application. And that's it. They accepted it. The thing is, uh, there are questions that I received if grade is actually a consideration. Um, not sure. Uh, there's a grade requirement. There's a grade computation. Uh, not sure if it really matters most. 
during the process in Iwa Women's University with all the GKS that has been accepted. I think there are only two GKS that has been up, uh, you know, two PhD applicants for GKS. Hi, Ivy. Pero tayo mga Q&A dito na yung iba hindi po, yung iba na sagot mo na yung iba hindi pa. So siguro yung hindi pa nasasagot yung ano meron ka pwede ka raw bang magbigay ng mga sample um interview questions. 'Di ba sabi mo when you applied in IWA, you had you had to go and you have to undergo interview. So what were the sample questions? All right. Actually, twice ako na interview. First, because I applied directly to Iwa, but second, I applied again for GKS. I was interviewed again, but the same by Iwa University and same set of panel of interviewers. So again, the pinaka main question lang talaga sa akin is about my PhD proposal, and the second thing is why I chose Korea given my background is China studies. So it's really very brief interview, ten minutes only. And it's all about my PhD proposal. Okay. So I think so, you really need to work on your PhD proposal or your proposal, thesis proposal or whatever it is, and you just need to make them interested. It has interest. to be different. So how about your, yung, aside from dissertation proposal, di ba? meron din yung study plan. Actually, I think, ano na to eh, magka-connect sila, isang document lang. So merong, any tips on writing your study plan? Mm -hmm. Ano ba nakalagay natin sa study plan, Ronel? Uh, yun, parang ha? basically yung topic mo sa dissertation. Tapos meron pa yung... Di, di what, ba, are your, what are your plans after graduating? Yeah, again? meron what din. What are your tracks? Actually, for this kind of questions, I believe wala namang mali o tamang answer for that. It's just how are you going to deliver it? Some will say that, uh, are you going to stay in Korea or what? Uh, I think I honestly answer the questions that, of course, I will pursue the studies. I will build my network. It, it's okay for me to go back to the Philippines and work in the government or work in the academy. If there are other opportunities here in Korea or somewhere else, it's, uh, I, okay, siguro it's, last question na, na kasi di ba siyempre ngayon pinapromote natin yung uh, scholarships in Korea. So, uh -huh. pero what's it in for the Philippines? Parang sabi mo, di ba, you are, you're, you are choosing between China and Korea, pero you chose Korea uh, because sa tingin mo, yung maritime affairs ay mas specialization nila or you can have another point of view sa Korea yeah. kasi nga mm -hmm. with maritime affairs usually China yung involved mm. uh, with the Philippines. So what's in it for the Philippines? I think kasama din to dun sa study plan na ano yung makukuha ng Pilipinas or yung, ng Pilipinas or your home country from this scholarship. Okay, I think for, um, especially for a Global Korea Scholarship, the aim of the Korean government is, of course, to help the Korean government as well and your home country. So, uh, given my background, actually, that I have worked in the government and in the academe, like, especially on my topic is on regional security, diplomacy, uh, you, I, it could, I could actually easily link it on how could I promote cooperation and um, between the two countries, not only between Korea and the Philippines, but also on the regional affairs. So it's a mat again, the, we should think that the there's no free lunch. So the government of Korea is giving scholarship, not only to benefit the scholars, but also the Korean government should actually benefit from it. So need to work on on something that you think that could help the two countries or the region at the same time. Okay, and I so think yes. it's very clear given my background, given what I want to do in the future in the study plan, it would really help. Yeah, so with that, i-tuloy na natin dun sa next topic natin 
Now, which is the topics of all the question and answer? Um, yung how do you actually apply? What are the age requirements? What are the documents? So, salamat Ivy for sharing. Okay. Tapos, mayo naman po. Um, I would like to share um, basic information about the Global Korea Scholarship. So, ito po, ako po yan yung nasa picture. Nakikita nyo na po ba? Ayan. So, ito po yung um, Study in Korea, Korean Government Scholarship Program. Kasi ito po yung first in, official name niya, but they changed it to Global Korea Scholarship or GKS. And it is um, sponsored by National Institute for International Education or NIIED. So, uh, as IB said a while ago, uh, the purpose of this is to provide international students with opportunities to study at higher education institution in Korea, which will enhance international education exchange and deepen mutual um, uh, friendship between Korea and participating countries. So meron pong dalawang programs, undergraduate and graduate. Since uh, yung mga audience po natin mas um, interested sa graduate program, so I will discuss about the graduate uh, programs. So, uh, ay ako po pala si Ronella Ranjo at uh, isa rin po akong alumnos ng GKS from 2011 to 2014. Tapos, um, graduate po ako ng MA Applied Linguistics sa Korea University sa Seoul po. So, yung scholarship period, it has two tracks. So, master course and doctorate course. So, um, sa master course, one year of Korean language plus two years of master course. And then, doctorate course, one year of Korean language plus three years of doctorate course. So, uh, nung narinig nga po natin sa experience ni Ivy kanina na ongoing yung kanyang uh, Korean language and Korean language course is a must. So, ganito po yung system. So, sa three years na yan, yung one year uh, para lang sa pag-aaral ng Korean language. After one year of um, studying Korean language, kailangan, kailangan, it's a requirement to pass topic or to test of proficiency in Korean language, level 3. Kapag hindi po kayo pumasin ng level 3, you cannot proceed to your master course or your doctorate course. So that's the, uh, that's the catch of this scholarship. So both for master and doctorate course, kailangan nyo po kumuha ng topic level 3. Pero pwede po kayong ma-exempt kapag meron na po kayong upon application, meron na po kayong topic level 5. So topic level 5 is actually uh, kind of, kung nanonood po kayo ng Korean drama, mga 80 to 90% na po yung naintindihan nyo dun sa Korean drama. Plus, uh, yun po, uh, academic. Meron din po Korean academic. So, makakatulong uh, din po yung Korean classes both for everyday living, kasi nga po, um, malawak ang ginagamit yung Korean language. And also, in your classes, in my case, since I was studying applied linguistics, so half of my classes were taught in using Korean language and half were taught in English. So, kailangan nakatulong talaga yung pag-aaral ko ng Korean language. Okay. So, for the qualifications, ito po yung mga tanong about age. The applicants and his or her parents must hold foreign citizenships. And then, your applicants must be under 40 years of age of the selection year. So, medyo mayroon pong uh, age requirement yung Korea. 40 years of age. Pababa. And then, uh, applicants must hold a bachelor's or master's degree as of August 31, 2019. And yung kung tanong kanina tungkol sa grades, 
Actually, uh, medyo nagmamatter po yung grade pagdating dito sa KGSP. Pero, hindi, I think for some cases, hindi din naman ito nasusunod. Pero, uh, depende on a case-to-case basis. So, at least 2.64 on a 4.0 scale, 2.80 on a 4.3 scale, 2.91 on a 4.5 scale, or 80% out of 100%. So, for uno, uh, dos pataas, uh, ano po ito, GPA or GWA, general weighted average, and for letter grades, B or better. So, yun po yung uh, grade requirement. Tapos, sa applicants who have been enrolled at Korean universities as exchange students are eligible to apply kasi May mga bachelor, previously exchange students, uh, in, they were not allowed to join the program anymore. And applicants must be in good health to study, of course, in Korea. And uh, this one, applicants in the field of natural science, technology, and engineering might be given preference. Might lang naman po. Pero ako po, uh, as I said, um, MA arts arts po ako more of social sciences applied linguistics so may, nakapasok naman po ako at uh, dun po sa mga natatanggap sa embassy they try to balance like half 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 meron po pa lang tatlong ano uh, categories natural science and technology and engineering social sciences and uh, arts and sports so lahat po ng ng academic fields, ay eh, pasok naman po dyan. So, yung tanong po tungkol sa ano yung mga pwedeng course na kunin, uh, basically lahat po pwede ninyong kunin under this scholarship. And descendants of the Korean War veterans receive additional 5% of the total marks and applicants from low-income families or underprivileged backgrounds will be given preference. Next, um, ito po yung uh, yun po, sinasabi po kanina ni Ivy na siya po university track. And ako naman po, I applied through the embassy track. Tapos ako po sa ngayon yung uh, president ng GKS Alumni Association under ng embassy. So we really try to promote uh, this uh, GKS program. So yun pong nakikita nyo yung parenthesis, yan po yung number of slots, maximum quota tinatawag nila. So, for university track, 28 scholars yung pwedeng tanggapin. And for embassy track, 13 scholars yung uh, pwedeng tanggapin. So, later on po, uh, for the next slide, I will uh, explain kung paano kayo mamimili sa dalawang ito. Or you will decide. And meron din po silang slots for Korean language teaching professionals, research, research program, and for university or embassy track, kailangan po isa lang yung kunin ninyo. Kasi syempre, di ba, sigurista tayo. Gusto natin na, oh, sige, para matanggap sa scholarship, apply ako ng university track, tapos embassy track. Pero same agency kasi yung nag-handle niyan. So pag nakita nila na both kayong nakapasa sa university track at embassy track, at both kayong, at nag-apply kayo at both sa track na yun, mawawala din yung scholarship sa inyo. So, yun po sa so later on, ano yung advantages nung, nung track? I'll explain more of that. And usually, the, the, the deadline of application is in March of each year. So, ngayon po, nung March, uh, nag-deadline na. Pero, uh, dahil sa COVID, wala pa rin po kami balita from the Korean Embassy. So for the, for next year at least meron pa po kayo ample time to prepare. So uh tandaan po natin yung March. So ito po yung sa embassy saka yung university track. So sa embassy po um if you apply through the embassy, ang kalaban niyo po basically ay buong Pilipinas. Kasi all the applicants in the Philippines will can go to uh, if they want to go to the embassy isa lang po yung application point embassy lang po so kalaban po natin dito Luzon Visayas Mindanao in my case parang mga 23 or 25 kape 
nung time na yun. Tapos, nung time na yun, tatlo lang po kami pinili. Tat- medyo limited pa yung kota nun. Tapos, so, ano yung mga, ko- mga ano nun? Um, uh, positive sides. Una, you can select three prospect universities. Tapos, easier to submit the requirements kasi within the Philippines lang. Tapos, yung kota medyo mas mababa lang compared doon sa university. Pero, scholarship is not yet guaranteed after the second round. So, ito po yun. So, yung embassy, screen niya lahat ng application sa buong Pilipinas. Then, after that, okay, they will, uh, for example, kota 13. So, 13, they will um, choose 13 ap- successful applicants for the first round. So, si embassy, he will, they will forward it to Korean University. So, sa kapag Nakapil, napili po kayo, meron kayong tatlong universities na kailangan piliin pa. Tapos yun po, ba, depende dun sa course na gusto ninyo and dun sa universities nyo. So, mer- so for this year, meron pong 64 universities na pwedeng pagpilian sa Korea. So basically, it's uh, every school in Korea. State, state universities and private universities. Okay? So, pero, ang masakla po dun, Okay, successful ka sa first uh, embassy, sa first round sa embassy among the 13 ka. Tapos, so pagdating sa Korea, i-scan pa nila yung, yung paper mo per school. Kung nakapasa ka dun sa halimbawa, dalawang university, okay, so you can get the scholarship and then you get to choose uh, two universities. So paano yung top? Meron usually first choice, second choice, and third choice. So, ang mas, medyo, pero ang masaklap, kapag walang pumili sa'yo na university, kahit pasado ka sa first round ng embassy, yun, uh, hindi mo rin makukuha yung scholarship. They cannot recommend you kasi walang tatanggap na school sa inyo. So, yun lang yung parang dalawang layer yung sa embassy. Pero in Ivy's case, ito yung sa university. So, isa lang yung yung kailangan ninyong piliin na university. Tapos, the requirements will be uh, shipped or sent directly to the selected school. Tulad nga nung nangyari kay IB. Okay. So, yung kota niya, mas marami. Okay. Kasi, kung sa embassy track, Pilipinas lang yung kalaban ninyo, sa university, basically, buong mundo. Kasi, halimbawa, yung sabihin na natin sa sky, yung Seoul National University, Korea University, tsaka Yonsei University, yung top three schools. Ito po yung pinakamarami yung application na natatanggap from all over the world. So, per school, meron din lang din silang kota. Okay? So, kapag, so in Ivy's case, natanggap siya ng IWA, then nalaman ng IWA na uh, meron siyang financial problem, hindi na kaya. So, kaya, po, kaya nila in-offer sa kanya yung GKS slot. Pero, she still need to apply. Okay, so, yun po yung ano naman sa university na una, kailangan matanggap ka ng university. Tapos, kapag sinabi mo, kapag yung university uh, sinabi ko sa'yo, oh, uh, paying student ka, pwede pong gawin yung kay Alvin, I, I cannot afford to study on my own, is there any scholarships available? So, they can offer you the GKS or scholarship kapag meron pang slot sa kanila. Tapos, after nun, na, na, na sinabi na ng school, okay, you're approved for GKS, and then basically, uh, tanggap ka na. So, yun lang po yung uh, pros and cons ng university tsaka embassy track. Pero, yun nga po, ang key din, choose one. So, choose your battleground, Philippines or the world, parang ganun. Okay? And next, so yung ano po, yung lahat ng mga documents na I will present uh, in the next slides, you can submit it through the KGSP in charge and the Sea of Republic of Korea in this uh, address. And then the, ulitin ko po, March yung um, deadline ng no application. And then these are the documents and basically ano po siya template lahat po yan may template so ma-download niyo po yung documents doon sa pinakita na kanina ni ID na website for GKS 
So may application form, personal statement, statement of purpose, letters of recommendation, two letters of recommendation, GKS applicant agreement, personal medical assessment, copy of diploma, certificate of graduation, and official transcript of records. Then proof of citizenship or birth certificate of parents and yourself. Tapos yung mga optional po yung topic at certifi certificate of test of proficiency in Korean or topic. Ayun uh, nga po, kung meron na kayong topic level 3 or up, pwede kayong mag-opt out doon sa um, one-year Korean language program. Pero, so, mababawasan din na one year yung, uh, yung taon nyo doon sa program. And then IELTS, TOEFL, kasi yung ibang uh, universities nag-require nito. Pero, dahil sa Philipp sa Universities in the Philippines, um, we use English as medium of instruction. So in case of UP, Diliman, and UP system, uh, they have the certification that you can get from the university registrar. I think uh, for other universities also, they have this. And then published papers, awards, if available. Okay, so you can download the, all the documents here. Or search nyo lang po sa Google, Global Korea Scholarship 2020. Tapos, yan po yung unang lalabas sa uh, internet browser ninyo. And then, these are the scholarship benefits. Round trip ticket, economy class ticket. And then, yan po, ngayon tumaas na kasi nung time namin, 900,000 won lang ito. So, ngayon po, 1,000 won per month. So, roughly 40,000 41 to 42,000 depende po. Pesos. Depende po sa palitan. So, kung i-convert po natin sa peso, mataas siya. Pero, yun po, may mga nagtanong din, uh, pwede bang sapat ba yung stipend na to? Sapat naman po nung nandun ako. I think for IBS case too, mang, hindi naman po siya naghihirap. Okay. So, sapat naman po itong monthly stipend na to. Pambayad sa dorm, at sa daily expenses mo. Tapos yung tuition fee, all admission fees are waived by the host institution. So libre po yung tuition fees. Yung tuition fee po kung paying kayo ay 5 million won. So around 200,000 pesos per semester. So um, sobrang laking cost po nun kung wala kayong scholarship. Eh, tapos thesis or dissertation pending cost, 500,000 to 800,000 depending on actual cost. And then there's research allowance per semester, usually for book allowance. 210,000 won for humanities and social sciences and 240,000 for natural science and uh, mechanic sciences. Uh, meron din pong relocation and settlement allowance of 200,000 upon arrival and upon completion of studies, meron din pong 200,000 won. At yung Korean language training expenses po ay fully covered. Okay, kapag po natapos ninyo yung Korean language training ninyo nang hindi kayo nakakapasa na topic level 3, kailangan nyo pong umuwi sa Pilipinas. Pero parang wala naman pong ano, refund na kung ano man. Tapos medical insurance, 20,000. And then, ito po, is para sa mga, since meron pa po kayong one year para maganda, so uh, an incentive para dun sa mga meron ng level 5 or higher na topic. So we, you will receive on top of 1 million won plus 100,000 won per month. So 1,100,000 1, won na kayo. So mga um, tataas na po yung inyong alawan. So ito po yung mga uh, website na pwede ninyong bisitahin uh, kaugnay po dyan. So kamsam nida, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. So I think uh, dito po nagtatapos yung ating um, 
session for today. Meron pa po ba tingin po tayo sa Q&A kung meron pa tayo yung mga hindi nasasagot? Ah, yung successful applicants po, ina-announce po sa, sa embassy website and then sa GKS uh, website. Tapos wala na po bang chance yung 40 years old Unfortunately, medyo ages po yung Korea. So, uh, meron pong chance yung 40, 40 years old. 45 years old po din sa research program. Pero that's for postdoctoral. So, kailangan po tapos na kayo ng PhD. Tapos, ano pa ba? Are the accommodation fees waived as well? Hindi po, uh, tulad po nang nabanggit ko na yung sa 1 million won po, kasama na po doon yung accommodation and then yung inyo pong uh, uh, living allowance. Uh, we can uh, send the slides to the UPKRC web, uh, email ad. So kung hindi po kayo, kunyari po, this year, trinay na mag-embassy track, you failed. Next year, university track naman. Try and try until you succeed. Yan, wala naman pong limit yung pag apply sa KGSP or GKS. Magkano yung accommodation sa dorm? Um, it varies. Oh, it varies. Yung sa akin kasi parang yung pinakamura yung tinuha ko, mga 120,000, 150,000 won. Magkano yun? So mga 4,000 to 5,000 a month? Add ko lang, add ko lang Ron. For example, uh, for example, for dormitories, May mga option kasi yung dorm, so you can choose kung gusto mong mag-isa ka lang sa kwarto. So, syempre, mas mahal yun. But anyway, uh, in case of me sa EY University next fall semester, for GKS students, merong discount for scholars. So, I think I'll just pay around 150,000 won and consider it in Seoul. So, sobrang mura niya. Meron ding mga universities that are actually offering free dormitory for GKS. So, depende din kasi sa university. So anyway, sa pagpili ng university, just check the website. Nakalagay lahat naman dun yung mga courses. And then, makikita nyo naman, just Google them and search for the universities. May kanya-kanyang specialty per university. So like for most of my classmates here, they're going to this university. Karamihan sa halang mga engineers, those who are in interior designing, they're usually going to this university. So just, nandun naman yung lahat ng list, nandun lahat ng info and mga programs yes. that they offer. So, pili lang kayo. Yes. Tapos yung time, timeline po, napakabilis lang po nito. Kasi March yung application. So, yung uh, release ng results will be April or May. And then the, the first round and then like second round results like May or June. Tapos August, kailangan nasa Korea na po kayo the same year. Di ba, Ivy? Yeah, yes. Last week ng August, nandito kami two weeks before mag-opening ng klase. So, yeah, meron ka namang, uh, I think, 200,000 won to adjust. Uh, stipend, is uh, for me, it's more than enough. <laughs> more than enough. Actually, hindi ka na magugutom. It's more than enough. Uh, for first year, mula kang topic, especially for GKS, you're not allowed to work. But mm. for Filipinos, actually, maraming nag-offer. Kung gusto mo mag-tutor ng English, but it's up to you. Uh, but yeah. Yun. Mm. Yun parang mm. yung sa, sa work kasi sa, sa Korean laws, bawal yung yeah. uh, may kontra ka kapag student ka. So, ang pwedeng solution din, eh, walang kontra. <laughs> so, kunyari, uh, yung mga oh, yung, yeah. yung mga uh, yung mga English tutor, kaliwaan. So, parang ganun. So, may, marami pa rin, ako din po, nung time po, eh, may mga uh, sideline din po ako ng English tutor. Tapos, ano yun, uh, sapat yun pang uwi ng plane ticket, ganyan, back and forth. Pero yun nga, pero kung yung uh, 
formal na magtatrabaho kayo or part-time, I think it's... Uh, kasi po, isipin nyo na lang po, binabayaran kayo ng gobyerno para mag-aral. So, yeah. yun, basically, yun yung, yung trabaho nyo. And I think there's no actually enough time para mag-work din kayo kasi with your busy schedules in school, uh, medyo mahirap. Mm. Yes. Yung yeah. Korean language po, sobrang, uh, ano po yan, um, intensive yung kanilang mm. in offers sa isang araw at least at least four hours class six tapos, hours nga ako eh oh six hours oh yeah six hours tapos may mga assignment so um medyo kulang din yung time okay, Ronel, clarify ko lang kanina if you apply for uh, Korea uh, for the government scholarship ma opt out lang yung language program if meron ka ng topic five So if you have yes. topic 3 or 4, level 3 or 4, you still need to do the language program unless you have topic 5. So, mm. pero for you to make your life easier here in Korea during your language program, my advice is really study Korea before going here. <laughs> Para hindi ka na masyadong pressure. I have no background in Korean language, so I started from scratch. In January, I took topic, uh, but I took topic 1, I got level 2. So this Uh, May, uh, we need to do the second topic. I'll try. Yeah, of course, pay for me. I need to get topic three. Kaya yan, waiting. Tsaka yeah. meron, aside from Korean language classes, meron ding in-offer yung class na topic class. Parang aaralin nyo kung paano yung uh, pag-exam din sa topic. Yeah. At tsaka so, malaking tulong din po talaga siya. Kasi lalo na din sa... Yeah, nakalagay din po din sa sa application forms na uh, they really encourage Korean language kasi kahit it depends on the universities pero based po din sa um, experience ng mga Filipino students uh, mar- marami pa rin po mga courses na 100% in Korea and then they needed to attend that so yun po. At meron May pa mga nagtatanong if the Korean language is like for everyday survival or it's actually like very intensive that you could use for maybe academic or professional use. Of course, if you start on level one, I think how many months is not enough for you to get like very professional or academic uh, jargons. So, mag-start ka talaga sa ganun. But some students here who arrive like they have level four already, Now they are attending level 6 plus classes, mm. may mga ganun. So medyo yun, mabibigat na in terms usually on writing journals, writing in newspapers, so iba-iba na yung words na gamit. So mm. it depends kung saan ka mag-start na level, doon ka papa. Uh, yung last na siguro yung sa, kasi nung time namin, uh, pwede yung extension. Kasi originally, three years for master's and uh, four years for PhD. Sa amin, during, so I, it took me three and a half years there. Kasi yung pag may, pag may extension, meron pa rin allowance. At, uh, wala pa rin akong trabaho nun. Kaya nag-extend ako. Pero this time, hindi na pwede yun. So kunyari, uh, meron ding option na, di ba, for one year, kailangan mo ng Korean language topic 3 kapag hindi mo pa siya napasa pwede mo i-extend na yeah. one term until mm. uh, ma-topic um, mapasa mo yung topic level 3 tapos saka ka mag-start ng masters di ba yes. tapos kapag hindi talaga kaya that's the time i think tam- may mga pinapauwi talaga ng scholars mm. Yeah, you, you can be extended for six months again if hindi ka nakapasa for The f- before the fall semester. Right. May tanong, pwedeng umuwi ng Pinas during vacation? Oh, syempre. <laughs> Pwede ka na umuwi. Kauwi ko nga lang no February, actually, one week. But for, especially for language students, um, if you go home, meron kang deduction per day na wala ka sa Korea. I think right now, we have 3,333 won per day na bawat wala ka sa Korea. Okay, dinak. tapos siguro may tanong din na paano mag-stand out or yung mga right, 
mga tips on writing self introduction or paano niyo ibebenta yung sarili niyo. Actually, parang syempre, marami pong mga applicants na ang umpisa talaga eh about K-pop, K-drama. Wala naman pong masama doon. Pero kasi sa syempre sa sa screener para oh, baka maden lang to ng mga concert o kaya mag uh, tourist na to, hindi naman talaga mag-aral. Gawin niyo pong academic yung K-pop, K-drama. Kasi in UPKRC, we have many academic papers related to that. So, yung interest niyo po, yun po yung uh, gawin ninyong uh, start off point para dun sa inyong ano, sa inyong uh, self introduction and why do you need to why do you need to study in Korea? Okay, so yun po. Wala naman po masama dun sa K-pop or K-drama, pero medyo i-level nyo na uh, academic. Tapos yung sa akin, kasi more of language ako, at yung background ko, BA Filipino. So, when I studied, I, when I wrote my thesis, pinag-aralan ko po yung mga Koreans sa Pilipinas na nag-aaral ng Pilipino kasi walang gumagawa. So yung mga ganong klase ng uh, study, yung mga topics for thesis, uh, inaalaw po yon ng GKS. Yun. So I think na ano na po natin, na sagot na natin lahat ng tanong at ano na tayo, Medyo overtime na tayo. Okay. Maraming salamat, uh, Ms. Ivy Ganadillo, para sa iyong pag-share ng iyong experience. And we would also like to thank UP Computer Center for the Technical Assistance for this webinar. Salamat, Will. And for more information or updates, please visit www.facebook.com slash UPKRC. Maraming salamat po. Ano ni Kashikshio? Wajo siya sa kamsamid. Thank you. Salamat, Ivy. Salamat po.